Guys, in a super flex startup, if I choose to draft Bijan, Jefferson, or Chase in the first round, how do I construct my roster thereafter to not put myself in a bad spot at QB? What do you think, Scott? Well, it's an enticing question because that probably means you're picking what outside of the top nine or 10. You're probably picking on the end, 11 or 12, most likely, maybe 10. So I think in a way it kind of forces you to do that. You know, you don't want to chase quarterbacks simply because there isn't enough of them. You know, you're, you're chasing your tail because now you're chasing the teams that clearly have better players. You're trying to match the teams that got the first, you know, five, six, seven, eight quarterbacks. And you're just forcing your way into a build that basically you're going to mimic their same type of roster build or roster construction, but you're going to be weaker across the board. So I actually think it's, it's the prime opportunity to go, okay, I'm at the 111. And I know if I take a quarterback, I'm actually just pissing value away and giving it back to the teams that are going to pick again before I get to make my next, you know, round three and round four picks. So I think there you kind of just embrace the fact that you're going to take best player available. Maybe you go, you go Bijan, Justin Jefferson, Bijan, Jamar Chase, and you just, right. you just bank that now you dare everybody else that has Mahomes, Herbert, Burrow, Hurts. They're probably not going to want to take a quarterback either, right? Like they're going to, they're going to not want to take the quarterbacks from you that you're going to be waiting on in round three, round four, round five, round six. They may take one other one. But they're not going to go, oh, man, I got to get that Daniel Jones in round two, you know, like so you're kind of just banking that you're now putting the onus back on them. You're playing chicken with them. Hey, you guys want to hoard the quarterbacks? Right. Go ahead. If you want to hoard, you know, Mac Jones, Kenny Pickett at the two, three turn just so that I can't get any, then fine. But I don't think you're helping the team or I don't think the team that took Josh Allen or Mahomes, if they go QB, QB just to be an asshole, I don't think they're helping their team. They're hurting you, but they're not helping them. So you kind of just. You dare them. It becomes it comes a game of chicken for quarterback the rest of the startup. You know you're going to need them, but maybe there'll be some value that falls to you. You're just not going to love your build, but you drew the 111. What can you do? You know, you probably tried to trade up and you couldn't. So I think you just have to kind of – that's your way to zag right there. Hell, I mean, just take Bryce Young in the third round too while you're at it. Um, I mean, just go chase and uh, well, not Bijan. Come on, don't draft a running back in the first round. I don't care if his name is Bijan or Saquon, whatever one. You don't do that. You're um, drafting the asset, though. Okay, so so you draft Chase or Jefferson in the first. That's fine because the elite quarterbacks are off the board, and you don't want to be stuck with Dak Prescott or uh, overpaying for Dak Prescott. I get that. On the way back around, I'm fine if I have to draft Dak Prescott there because, <clears throat> excuse me, he's still a top you know ten, twelve QB. But if another elite wide receiver is on the board, I don't know. Maybe it's just time I go contrarian. I draft another wide receiver, and we're going to have to figure out quarterback another way. Can I accrue some 24 picks? Because I'm probably going to need them for a quarterback. <laughs> and understand that, you know what, there's a reason that I just drafted 24-year-old wide receivers, um, wide receiver one and wide receiver two or three in the league in Dynasty because, well, uh, I'm going to need to get a quarterback next year when I go 0 and, uh, or 1 and 15 or 2 and 12 or 3 and 8, whatever, however many games there are. When you um when you take a running back in the first round, do you, do you kind of have to commit to, okay, I'm going to try to contend this year, you know, as opposed to doing more of a quote-unquote productive struggle approach? Do you feel like you need to focus your roster build on contending if you take Bijan in round one? No, I mean, I think if it's the right running back and it's one you're taking early, I mean, there's only one running back you would take in the first round. It would be the 101 pick, right? Or it would be Bijan. But even if you end up taking Ken Walker in the second, or let's say you were at the two, three turn and you took Ken Walker, like you probably already have a quarterback with him, but let's say you took a running back somewhere in the first three or four rounds. You don't have to contend this year. I mean, you probably want to, but it's not the end of the world if your your contention window gets pushed out another year. And I think that we were talking about this earlier over on um, on DD about running back and the current market and everything. To me, the running back market has all become now about your roster construction. Like in a startup, I actually don't mind the value of running backs because I know when I'm drafting one, I'm probably making a big swing. If I draft Brees Hall in the third of a startup, I'm taking a big swing. I'm taking on some risk, but I'm also constructing my team around that selection. I'm not stuck having to pay the trade price for him. Maybe in a league, I get a decent trade price for him, but what if it's not the right team to put him on? You know, that's where it kind of feels like the running back market is all over the place. At least in a startup, 
I control what my roster is going to look like around that running back. So let's say I took right. Jameer Gibbs because I drafted the 103 or the 104 in the third round of a startup, and that ends up being Jameer Gibbs. Clearly, when I took the 103, I wasn't sure what that was going to be, but let's say down the road, it ends up being Jameer Gibbs. I at least know that I have the flexibility of building my roster around him as like my anchor. And that doesn't have to be for just 2023. That can be 2023 and maybe 2024. But I can roster construct around it. And you know there's going to be, if you're okay with Derrick Henry as your anchor on a contender, you might be able to get him in like round seven or round eight of the startup. You never know. And you're, you're just like, okay, I have to replace him at some point. But that that gives me a, a backup option. So I think in a startup, you can hit your roster construction better, which makes me more comfortable taking running backs at their value versus having to trade for them. The worst thing is I don't have any running backs and now I'm subject to the trade market because now I'm probably breaking up other teams roster builds to get the guy that I want. Yeah. I don't know. I think when you start drafting running backs early, you're committed to drafting more running backs. It's like, uh, I don't want to say, like, make it sound like I hate running backs, but it's like spending, putting good money after bad money. You're just like, all right, well, I got a running back in the first. Guess I got to get one in the second. I might as well get one in the third. Psh, why not the fourth? Let's just go all running backs, and I need to compete next year and the year after, even if it is Bijan, because um, he's still a running back, and there's still the volatility and the risk of injury. And the reason, you know, you generally like to build around quarterback or wide receiver. If you can't build around quarterback, all right, well, then try the wide receiver route and then go get you some quarterbacks later. Um, I, you know, I, I, I say this as a person that, like, I don't know the last time I drafted a running back in the first four rounds of a startup. Um, I just, I, I physically can't do it. Like, you know, my, my finger will hover over the button and I'm like, hmm, free Hall or CD Lamb. CD land, you know what I mean? And even if in a trade I would, it's funny because in a trade I might go, all right, well, yeah, give me Brees Hall. I'm not saying I would, so don't send me that offer. But for some reason in a startup, I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Just can't do it. I mean, I think if it's us, we're probably looking at where can I get the best value in the startup. We're fine with like Dalvin Cook as our RB1 in a startup because I can probably get him way later to where – I've already taken two quarterbacks, four receivers, and maybe a tight end before I take my old crusty running back that only has a year left. But I also acknowledge that I'm only going to get a year out of them at best. You know, next year I'm going to be in the same boat where I probably have to look to address the position. That's where the current market is very interesting because I think if all three of us did a startup, it would be a race of like who doesn't want to take the first running back, you know? We'd all be looking, oh, man, yeah. I can get James Conner as my RB1 and I can get him in round 12. I'm, I'm, I'd rather do that. And draft Brees Hall in the second or the third. But that's just how we build. Other people, you can also argue if you get into a league with us three and seven other people that are playing like us, every round after like round two or three, the best value on the board might be running back if you can turn around and find a trade market. The problem is in a startup, if 10 people fade running back, two months after the startup's over, is there going to be 10 people that are excited to trade for all your running backs or are you just going to be stuck with them? So that's where it's a a push and pull. You got to be able to read your league and, and what they want. 12 team super flex start 11. Are you going T law or chase in the first round? You're looking, you're looking at both of them. Are you clicking draft on T law or chase? Uh, T law. Come on. Come on, Shane. T law. Yeah. But it definitely would be like, Oh God, can I get someone else to trade up here and like, just give me a third <laughs> that I know will take chase. A like third. I- I just make them do it for me so I didn't have to take T law over. Like, you know, what I mean, literally the guy right behind me or girl right behind me, woman right behind me, I'd be like, uh, you want to trade up here? Like, are you in the chase? Are you taking chase here? You have to take chase here. If you trade, if we make this trade, yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to it's make a, the, you have promise. to draft chase. And if they do, then I'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, I had to draft T law, had to do it. Okay. I, I get what you're saying. So basically, you, you want to still get the player that you were going to get. You just want to feel like you. You, you traded down and got a little Good extra value. value. Yeah. yeah, right. So we uh, so we're going to talk about everything startup tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got 215 eyeballs in here thus far. Thank you for joining. It's Tuesday night. This is our uh, our favorite night of the week. Um, so we're going to bounce around a lot. I'm sure when it comes to uh, startups and questions and whatnot. One question I had on my mind, and it's a popular way of starting uh, leagues or doing startups, is doing a derby draft order. 
Okay. So you have an initial randomizer, it gives you an order, and then one by one you go through and select which spot you want to pick from. So let's say we're doing a derby. You got the first pick. Okay. So first in the randomizer, you get to select your pick. You have pick of the litter, one to 12. What are you taking? Is it a third round reversal? It is a third round reversal. And we'll explain we'll explain that too. But yeah. Uh it's the 101. 108 or 109. I love how Shane Braid Shane's brain. Were you, were you counting, so you were counting quarterbacks? I'm counting quarterbacks. Chase and Jefferson are going off the board. Probably there's going to be some in great that takes Bijan um, just because they're like, oh, I got to get him first. I don't know why they talk like that, but they do. And then on the way back, I could probably get um, a wide receiver, one of the top six wide receivers, top five wide receivers after getting a top – eight, nine quarterback, even if it is Joe Barrow, who has moved up a little bit in my tears. I I don't, I don't know. Oh yeah. Just, I'm playing 5D let, chess let's, here. It's not even a game. Let, let's take it. He's, Shane's playing let's, like 18D chess. I can't even track what he said because I'm pretty sure in a startup, you can get Chase or Jefferson at like the 110, 111. I, I don't know. Maybe you can, but I'm thinking someone's going to take them before that. And then also I get the third round reversal. So I go one. 10, but then you get Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson. I'm fine with that. I'd love to. Get but but you, Watson. it's a math game. There's nine quarterbacks chasing Jefferson. So why wouldn't you take the 111? Because I don't. That's getting a little too risky. Because then if everybody's like, "You're not tricking me. I'm not taking Chaser Jefferson here," and everyone's like, and they go actually the way they should, then I'm like, God darn it! I ended up with Dak Prescott slash Kirk Cousins. Okay, so so if we're if we're uh... If new people are listening to us and they don't even know what a third round reversal is, who wants to explain it in a succinct fashion and why you should or should not do them? Oh, that's Scott. They said succinct. Oh, I, succinct. I, want, I wanted no. some entertainment, so I was going to have Shane do it. Entertainment is Shane. Succinct is not really Scott. Maybe eloquent, but not succinct. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, so third round reversal is basically it's it's the snake order. So first and then back towards the back end of the first, except for the third round gets to go again to start the third round. So it's very easy. You just get to the third round and you reverse the order. So the 101 is slightly disadvantaged because they now have to wait until the 312. So 101, they would come back and pick at the 212, but then the third round at the back end would go first. So the person that has the 212 would have to wait till the 312. The person that got the 112 in the 201 would get to go again at the 301. It's easier when you have like a visual because yeah, you exactly. can just see the arrows. But yeah, it's it, it helps balance out the fact that I think we would all agree if you were picking at the 112 or 111 this year, it, it the value is a little bit off. So you're getting a little extra value. I think at, at this point in Dynasty, it actually makes a lot of sense to do third round reversal even in a 12 team league. I don't care anyway. You give me some picks. I'm happy to make them. Um, but yeah, most of the drafts that I've done lately have been third round reversal for the last probably two years, except for HQ leagues. And that's because the the commissioner, I don't think, knows how to do the settings. But I don't. I don't. Or, or I just, HQ. I just don't no, no, no. In HQ. Leagues. Oh, in HQ? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, you do. Yeah. No, no. no, no. The, the elderly gentleman that I do HQ with, I don't believe he knows how to set that up. But at least he can laugh about it. <laughs> yes. You can laugh about it. So, um, okay. So, Shane, you said 109 ish. 101 was, was your fast answer, Scott. Taking third round reversal out of it. I don't know. I kind of like being in a, I don't mind 102, you know, because let, let that person pick, you know, Mahomes or, or Allen or, Burrow, who knows, right? You mean um, and I'll take the second one. You mean you mean Hertz? I, ooh, ooh, I like Hertz, the one hundred and one because I like the picking back to back. Yeah, the back to back. Yeah. Nice. The only negative is it's hard when you, if you ever pick on the end, it's hard to trade those picks because it feels like you you don't have a lot of flexibility. Like if you're going to move down around, you usually end up moving down like twenty two picks or something like that. But I do like picking back to back. It it is nice to if you have a certain roster construction in mind, it's nice in like round six and round seven to like, you know, double tap receiver, double tap tight end. You know what I mean? It's really nice yeah. to be able to have the two picks in a row. All right. So I just want to get some of these important uh comments out of the way. Uh go birds. That is correct. <laughs> uh that is an eagle, correct? We got Shane on the ones and twos, clearly. Eagles, correct. Eagles. 
And, and Jared, I'm actually, my dude, um, Eagles. I'm actually only 30 minutes away from Shane right now. I'm working up in uh up Bryn in Mar. Philadelphia. Yeah, up in Bryn Mawr. I'm in the the fancy the fancy part. My windows are fine here apparently. Um, let's get that Eagles nonsense off of the board. Um, fly, Commanders, fly. Let's go to uh, let's go to Professor Charlie T. He gave us a uh, a very generous super chat. It's a uh, it's a three parter. He did list all four parts for Shane uh, to make it easy. So let, let's put him up here. Thank you very much, Professor Charlie T. I want to go worst to first, and I think I can do it. Am I crazy? I got three moves on the table right now, and thank you so much. Part one: ten team super flex start nine. His 23 picks are 101, 108, 201, and two thirds. 24 first and second, and some thirds. Part two, his quarterbacks are Allen, Watson, Wentz, Mayfield, Darnold. He's got DK, Ridley, London, Pickens, Gabe Davis. I always have to mention that name, right? RBs are Algier, Warren, and an army of lottery tickets. Tight end, he's got Andrews and Fryermuth. Part three, Potential moves, teams agreed, terms agreed upon in chats, trade Derrick Henry for the one, two, three in 25. Okay, so trading Derrick Henry for 25, first, second, and third. Um, Jonathan Taylor for the 108, a 24 first in Algier. So how should we do this? Let's, let's, let's start with that. Derrick Henry, regardless of, uh, of what his team breakdown was, would you trade him for a 25 first, second, and third? I wouldn't do all three of those deals right there. I'd probably pick two of the three. I would probably go Derrick Henry. I'd be fine paying the 25 first, second, and third for that. The third means nothing in a 10-team start nine. The second is probably iffy. Like That's probably a, a, a color up to another piece type of of asset. It's not really like a starter level asset. And then I'd probably do the, uh, I'd probably just do that trade, honestly. Yeah. The, the third trade thing. up here. Yeah. I'm not moving Bijan in this format. This is the time. This is the team that I would draft them on. I'm not taking the one Oh five Garrett Wilson, Jerry Judy. Uh, the second one I hit or miss. Honestly, I don't even want to pay two first for Jonathan Taylor at this point. Feels like I don't have to, I, I'd rather go give the one Oh eight, for another running back like Derrick Henry than pay the extra first for Jonathan Taylor. So I'm, I like what he's trying to do, getting the hammers at running back. But what's he giving up here? He's he's giving up a total here of the 101, a 24 first, a 25 first, and the 108. I, I'm not making these moves right now. Too much. I'd do the Henry deal and then just sit. Shane, the um, would you take the 101 or the 105 Garrett Wilson and Jerry Judy? I do like 105 and Garrett Wilson, but this is only start nine, right? And it's a 10-team start nine where he's got two elite quarterbacks already. So, sure, the value might be, oh, well, you know, Anthony Richardson. You know what I mean? Or I I don't know. I I, I do love me some Garrett Wilson. I'd think about it. I'd probably not do it. I'd probably end up holding on to it. Jerry Judy's not enough to move the needle for me. I'm going to put myself on mute as an airplane crashes into the side of the building. Hopefully it does not. Hopefully it does not. Oh, that's Uh, right. It's just a helicopter. Just the police. We're fine. (laughs) They'll never find you. They'll never find you. Um, Part four was I'd love to do all three at the exact same time. But do I even need to do number three? Is number two too much? Number one feels like a smash. Okay, so did you guys cover um, cover all those? Scott, you said you only would do number one. <clears throat> uh, in January, I'm not trading every pick I own for three <clears throat> running backs. That yeah. That's the issue I have. And really, it's only two running backs. Yeah, he's getting the 105, and he's getting Garrett Wilson and Jerry Judy. I do agree he can use a couple extra receivers. It just feels like these are three, like hammer trades where you're giving up all the leverage in all of them and you really have to thread the needle right versus he has enough assets like Allen, Watson. He's got tight end covered in a shallow league, right? Like I feel very comfortable with Andrews and Fryermuth. So yep. it's really about just building up your receiver core and being able to get a couple hammers at running back. I just don't think you need to pay you know, all that capital just to get Derrick Henry and Jonathan Taylor. I mean, I don't care about 25 first. So sure, I'm sending that for Derrick Henry. Give me. 
Um, and then I'll yeah. just, I'll hold on to Bijan and then we'll do Bijan and Derek Henry. And then I've got a beautiful, uh, um, algorithm of, uh, that's not how you use that word, but I have a beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> I got a beautiful mixture of uh, a super young back and a, a super old back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what did you say? A malgorithm? <laughs> yeah. Malgorithm. <laughs> Okay. Uh, thank you again, Charlie. We appreciate that, man. Um, okay. what? Uh, let's put this up here and then we'll talk another startup question, but I just saw this one. What's the best way to take advantage of a league that's not active in the trade market? Most of the managers are stingy slash overvalue their own players. Superflex league. We're all in some of those, right? They, they don't want to pay you for your players, but their players are so good and so expensive. So what do you do? Well, what do they not value? Yeah. Do they not value picks? Do they not value making picks? I mean, I guess it can just be one of those endowment effect leagues where they value everything they have, nothing you have. If they have picks, they're super valuable. If you want to try to sell them picks, no, they don't want your picks. I mean, we've been in leagues like that. And that's more of, that's not a league thing. That's a manager thing, right? That means there's just a bunch of managers that are tight wads and they're, they're not... The good news is when I see people like that, they probably are not going to be able to out strategize me or outthink me because they're way too rigid. Like you shouldn't be just going, well, yeah. I have this running back, so I'm overvaluing him. Yet if I tried to trade to that person, the same player in another league, they go, I don't really want that guy. So if you can spot those, I mean, I don't know. I think you got to probably find out where their holes are, where their weaknesses are, what they undervalue and zag that way. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you noted that they overvalue their own players means that they don't value picks. They don't trust uh, – right. what's the word I'm looking for? They don't trust like that Chris Olave or Garrett Wilson or Drake London or someone that, that, that popped in their rookie season, but maybe obviously not to a 1,500-yard level. Like they look at them and go, oh, that's just a wide receiver too. They don't seem to – they probably don't understand what range of outcomes are, are, are mm -hmm. typical for mm -hmm. players like that. So I'm trying to get all their money, um, if that's what they're going to let me do, if they just want to go ahead and value their old players and let their rosters age out and wither away and die on the vine. Yeah, and there's a, there's a good chance that they're not uh, as active either, right? So try to uh, try to take action before them on the waiver wires, outwork them, outsmart them, like uh, like Scott Connor here. Um, okay, let's go to um, let's go to another question here. Uh, there was one on a third round reversal. I guess. Oh, here was a here was a question. Let me throw this up. It's gonna take me one second. Um, here we go. Twelve team super flex two PPR for tight end start twelve. In a startup, do you prioritize startable tight ends over startable wide receivers? Also, how many startable tight ends are there in this kind of league? So I did a show on this, right? I did the tight end roster construction one, and I talked about two PPR. Like historically, it's right around like. 16 to 20 ish. But I think when you start getting into like the really flat ranges of like wide receiver threes, fours, fives, you're talking about like the low end flex guys where you just say, okay, I'll, I'm willing to roster the Josh Palmer types, you know, and when you're there, that's He is frozen, right? Is, okay. Is, is that just me on my, on my hotel? No, no, no. Scott, Scott's frozen. very frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while he's still frozen. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Am yeah. I back? You're back. You're back. So sorry, right. sorry about that. I don't know what happened. You're good. Uh, you normally you see the tight end start to fall off and it's just because the names are yucky, you know? Like think of last year, like nobody really wanted to draft like the Austin Hooper types because it's like, yeah, that guy's not really exciting. Yeah. But if you can find those tight ends that put up the random look at Evan Ingram last year. That's a guy where if you would have had him. If you're telling me I can get 70, 700 and seven touchdowns from a tight end, do the math on that. That's 140 points for the catches. That's another 70 for the for the yards and then the touchdowns. I mean, easily you get to 15 points per game for tight end 14, 15, 16, 17. Not a lot of receivers are just giving you 15 points per game. You know, that's like wide receiver two range. So I think you start to see people value the youth of the receiver over the 28 year old tight end and normally the points per game or the value of those tight ends, it, it comes at much better equity in the startup. So to answer the original question, yes, I think, I think I'd take my receivers even earlier because I actually think you can exploit the market on the tight ends later. 
Where would you take a uh, Kyle Pitts in a startup right now? It's a tight end premium. Where would you be comfortable taking Kyle Pitts? Two PPR. Let's call it. Um, let's call it. Yes, an extra, an extra PPR. So two PPR for tight ends. Oh. I mean, you could justify him on the turn. He's probably in the Jefferson Chase range. Okay. The, the the issue is if he doesn't. If he if he takes four years to hit seventy to eighty percent of that, you, you probably overpaid a little bit, you know. But the asset value itself should retain some. As long as someone else thinks he can become, you know, twenty plus point per game, then it's probably a smart pick. To me, it's me. I'm the one that does. I'm going to be the one that you can sell him to next year. But guess what? If he doesn't have a good year, you're not going to get nearly the value you just spent on him. Um. I'd like to see I'd be bold and be like, I'll take him on the turn. More likely, I'll take him at the mid-second. Like, I'll definitely take him yeah. before C.D. Uh, Lamb. I'll take him before A.J. Brown. Um, but I'm not nearly bold enough to take him over one of the quarterbacks or uh, Jefferson or Chase. And Jefferson or Chase, he could end up outscoring those guys in that format. It's just I don't have the uh, cojones to do that. Make me a uh, make me an offer in HQ six. My <clears throat> excuse me, my startup. I went. I think Pitts Chase or Chase Pitts. So t- take a take a peepsy. You send some offers. I send offers. You you just decline them and don't even counter. It's like being in a bid one well, sided hey, relationship. Well, hey, listen. If if you're not if you're not going to pay attention during our shows and live streams, at, l- at least be at least be sending uh, sending trades, <laughs> sending trades to me. All right, I'm uh, here. Okay. HQ6. Bye, Felicia. Felicia. Normally what uh, Shane does is just read Clay's like facial expressions when we're talking about things and then he'll send trades involving like those prototypes during the stream and just assumes yeah. Clay's going to be reasonable but then you realize Clay needs the 20% tax to actually accept the trade, right Clay Shane? Ex- I don't think I've never been in a league where Clay has accepted any trade I've ever sent him. Is it an MFL league? If no so, league. I, I don't no even league. log into it. You don't even yeah, have we, you do have pits. We we've done a we've done a trade. Okay, Benny Bellagio's got a super chat. Thank you very much, Benny. 12 team super flex start 11 PPR. It's two PPR for tight ends. Uh, someone wants to trade Herbert. What do I offer for Herbert? Okay, so if we're selling Herbert, we're charging basically four first worth of value, right? In a 12 team super flex in a, in a vacuum. Yeah. Just, just four first. I'm going to go a step further. Uh-oh. I don't sell a quarterback gonna, in this tier unless yeah. I get another one in this tier, which a lot of times that closes off the trade negotiations right there because. Well, okay. So let me say this is our, our two of the assets that I'm getting um, the one Oh two and the one Oh four. Um, Cause then I'm going to get Bryce young and CJ Stroud and go, one of these dudes <laughs> is going to be Herbert. And if both these dudes is Herbert, well then I just killed the league. If neither of these dudes is Herbert, well then I really don't like life, but you know what? I'll make a trade later and we'll, we'll figure it out. And that, start and 11. Too. Yeah. Sorry. Start 11. It, it, I also, you know, I can add another starter to that. So yeah. Yeah. I, I do it. But if you're going to offer, bro, you got to offer strong. You got to start with two first and they got to be early. Um, and expect to be rejected. So, if you're selling Herbert, though, do you even do you even want to cash out for for just picks? You know, don't don't you just want to don't you just want to tear down and not tear down as you know anywhere beyond like like Dak, for example? Like you're only talking to a handful of owners. Yeah, yeah as opposed to just cash as a yeah, very exclusive club, as opposed to just cashing out for picks. What do you think, Scott? Here's the problem. The people that probably want to buy your Herbert. Now he mentions someone is willing to trade Herbert. This is why I always say if someone's willing to move a guy and they've made it publicly known in the chat on their trade block, whatever, whoever it is, any of those top nine, I'm not getting greedy. Obviously, if it's Mahomes or Allen or Hertz, like you're gonna you're gonna look at what their team could use, right? But even if it's Watson or Lawrence or Fields, you don't know why the person wants to trade them. So you at least have to inquire. The deal you're getting, again, how hard is it to get these guys in leagues? How hard is it? Someone even mentioned in the comments earlier, We I don't think we started, but you know, it's really hard to trade up in startups to get two elite quarterbacks. People just aren't moving off those picks. Even if they don't love Justin Fields, it feels like it's hard for you to move up and take Justin Fields. Like they're, They may go in a different direction, but you're not getting those deals. So if someone's willing to trade an elite quarterback, you inquire. You, you make an offer. 
But what I want to do is I want to make the offer that's going to be able to include my dog shit quarterback that I'm probably trying to upgrade, right? Can I get any value when I'm holding Jared Goff or Mac Jones? Do they count in the trade? I'm sure the person wants a quarterback back, but when I send them Mac Jones in two firsts, they're looking at Mac Jones as, I'll take him. He's not, he's not moving the needle in the deal, though. So you kind of got to cater to what they want. But yeah, if I can give up three firsts and Mac Jones and get Justin Herbert, I'm just doing it. I don't even care where my team is, you know? So make an offer. If you, Shane's a unique flower. Shane is actually someone that would go, ooh, the 102 and the 104. Hey, man, I can get two shots there. Yeah. Most people, I don't think, are trading Justin <laughs> Herbert for two picks. I'm a little more, um, what's the word? I'm not adverse to risk. Adventurous. Yeah, I'm adventurous. <laughs> Frisk, frisky. <laughs> frisky. Yeah, I mean, it's very much like my sex life, like right frisky. on the edge. Like I'm willing to try things that you might not be a great idea, but I'm like, this could be fun. Um, and look, either you'll, you'll regret it and go, you know, that's why you don't do it. Or sometimes you'll hit and you look like a genius. Um, and really the line is that thin. Yep. We're, we're live by the way, Shane, just to <clears throat> make sure you remember that. Yep. I didn't curse. Um, yeah. 311 eyeballs did not hear you curse. Uh, they've already hit the like. Now, if you wouldn't mind looking down, hit that little like button if you're enjoying this content so far. I like Chain's cheese it shirt tonight. One of my uh, one of my faves. Yep, there we go. Um, okay, let's move on here. Thank you again for that super chat. We'll go to uh, who was it? Jared had a quick inbox tray that I just wanted to knock out. Uh, give Gabe Davis receive Elijah Moore. Ten team start nine PPR. Who do you like more straight up? Straight up, Elijah I Moore? like Elijah Moore more. But, and you could probably get it. You should be able to get a kicker added to Elijah Moore for Gabe Davis, but I'll take Elijah Moore. I think both are outside startable range here, but I think the logic would be, first of all, I don't like doing one for one deals because I don't, I don't want to flip coins and say I'm going to beat you at coin flips or rock, paper, scissors. That's, yeah. that's usually not a good way to strategize. Doesn't it feel like, though, Gabe Davis is the guy that people are kind of over now? And Elijah Moore has yeah. at least like a 10% chance of having like a Gabe Davis hype year. Mm -hmm. So just yep. for that tiebreaker, I'd rather have Elijah Moore where it's like, Gabe, this was Gabe Davis's year. You know, this was the year where someone would have been willing to buy him. And now it's like, yep, he's yesterday's news. So, yep, give me Elijah. Yep. Jared, I think you have an offer for me in your inbox, by the way. So. Let's hey, Clay, that, uh, you yeah. have an offer in your inbox from me. Slinging trades, baby. Um, speaking of trades, let's talk about uh, trading in startups. Okay. So let's say you're new to a startup or you've done one and you're, you're almost scared to trade because you're like, okay, if I want to trade up to this, what do I even attach? Do I attach a, a fourth rounder? You know, if I'm trading up from the second to get into the first, am I going to have to give up a fourth Talk to me about trading in startups, especially if you're a little bit more on the beginner side, what you, uh, what you would recommend. Tell me, Jane, we're going to go. Scott, nah, uh, you, I mean, I, I don't, I don't trade a lot. Um, oh, one thing, on. <laughs> one thing we never want to do is generally, you generally don't want to do is throw in, um, future firsts for, for anything that you do. Um, unless it's just an absurd move. Like if someone's willing to let me move up from the eighth round to the second and I have to add a future 24 first, fine. But yep. if we're trying to make like a, if you're trying to move up around two rounds, I wouldn't give up a first. Now, I maybe if it's from the third to the first, um, I, I would do that because again, the difference between a first rounder and a third rounder is pretty steep. But after that, it flattens out. So it makes absolutely no sense to add a first into that. Plus, you don't know if your team's going to be any good next year. You might need that 24 first. You know, we all get uh, trigger happy or super happy when we start drafting. We're like, this team is a beast. There's no way I can lose. But guess what? There's usually at least seven people in your league that are thinking the same thing. Um, and then there's like three people that are like, uh, what did I do? And then two people were like, well, I'm building for the future. So I don't care. But out of those seven, like half of you are going to be wrong. Um, and you could be one of them. So if you can avoid trading your first, do it. I, obviously getting other first is great. And we're still all about trading up into the first back into the first and getting yourself two elite quarterbacks. The hardest thing to get in fantasy is elite quarterbacks. And if I can get them in a startup, which is probably going to end up being cheaper than anywhere else, 
because people have problems putting names to picks, even though all they have to do is go to the ADP on uh, what's that guy's site? A Deca, a Deca, a Deca, or a DLF, or wherever, and you could just add names to it. A lot of people don't do that for whatever reason. I think in a startup, the best chance you have is to get a deal where it's your best shot to do a deal where you're not losing any of the leverage. There's nothing worse than doing a startup in January or February and you're narrowing all of your outcomes to like, okay, I built this awesome roster. I traded away all my future picks. I traded up so I can get these elite eight players. And you think your team's just awesome. And then we're eight months away from playing a game. And then you get to the start of the season and three of your guys are injured. One of your guys, maybe their value went down. Now you're looking at a team where you go, well, I still have an okay team. Nowhere close to the dominant team I think I built. I have no outs because I traded away all my future first. The only way I can really rescue my team back to a point where it's not just going to be like the donator is to break up the construction that I paid so much for back in January or February when I did the startup. So early in the year startup season right now, I have two rules of thumb. I never trade my future first, period. I don't I don't trade them. I don't throw them into a deal unless it's just oh my God, someone's really get, letting me go from round five to round two in the startup. And it's just a slam dunk player for player that you insert the two players. You go, yep. yeah, I'd tack on a first to get that player. Those are few and far between. I would say 90% of those offers are bad offers for the team giving up the first. Like that's where you lose the leverage. In fact, if I can get the two elite quarterbacks, I'll pay whatever I have to pay as long as I'm getting the same number of picks back. back. So people right. go man, what would you pay to get that 108 so you can draft Justin Fields? I'd give up my second round startup, my third round startup, my fourth round startup. Just give me back a 10th and a 9th or a 10th and an 11th. That gives me two shots where I can take extra players later on to balance it out. And then you know how you make up value if you make a deal like that? You get to round five, round six. Is that where I can now leverage other people into paying me the sucker trades? Can I trade my round five startup pick for a round nine in a future first? Because guess what? Go back and look at some startup ADP from last January or February. You're going to go, wow, that player went in round five and that player went in round nine. Like they, no were, difference. they were both wide receivers and literally they're the same thing. And someone paid a first to go from Cortland Sutton to Christian Kirk. You know, like that's the type of deal you can get now that you're not getting in September, the Labor Day weekend. You're not getting that because all the information is in front of us at that point. So yeah. it's really just exploiting the time of year that you're doing the startup and never breaking those two rules. Get as many pickbacks as you get as you trade away and don't trade your future picks and you'll be safe. Yeah, and, and Scott, maybe maybe during this show you'll have time uh, to try to find it. I'm, I'm curious as to, I think it was in the auction uh, listener league, you took Josh Allen, then you traded back into the first to get Joe Burrow. I'm curious as to what you what you paid there to make that move. So if you could find that at some point, um, that would give us a good basis because you you did end up splitting the championship in that league. So it shows you that you can be aggressive and get two elite quarterbacks and still still compete, um, even though you trade away a bunch of capital. What was the other question that I had in my uh, had in my head here? Oh, also in terms of trading draft picks, I in the past would use calculators as well. I don't know if there are free ones where you can do it. I I have Dynasty Trade Calculator. They're also an affiliate. Link in the description. Um, but you can get a cheap calculator and punch in whatever rounds and spot you're in, and that can help you out by telling you what you need to pay to move from the 12th to the 10th, what you, what you should ask to have kicked back in. So I definitely would not shy away from calculators if you're trying to trade in a startup for the first time. Okay. Let's, um, let's do this. Sure. Go ahead, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with using calculators. There's nothing no. wrong with asking other people that are more experienced than you. If a trade is a good deal. Um, both of Scott and I have patrons, you have a uh, dynasty pandemic and there's people of varying experiences playing in there, right? So a lot of times you'll see a question, and it, it, I don't want to say it's almost um, wrote to you, but it is because you're like, you're like, no, 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 don't do that trade. So ask. If you don't have a ton of experience, ask people that you trust that do have experience that they can tell you like, no, 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 that's that's not a great idea. Yep. Okay, let's um let's do this one here. This is a two parter that we had in the in the hopper. It's one of two. I've been in and seen startup mocks where people people are taking players like Lamb, Waddle, Kyler, AJ Brown over the 101 or over Bijan if he's actually in the draft itself. 
I see the down the board too with other picks and find myself taking a bunch of rookies because of the value. Is that something you guys like doing? Yeah, we had another question in here that is basically how many startup picks is too much to use on rookie picks. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I think that you have to have a roster construction plan. But right now you tend to see the rookie picks because people aren't sure, especially as you get outside of the top seven, eight, nine picks, people look at that 112 and they go, they're scared because they're not sure of who that player is going to be. But I'm very confident saying like, that's going to end up being like a first round NFL receiver. You may not like them more than the receivers you could have taken in the startup, but part of what you're paying for when you draft the 112 over Jerry Judy in the startup is you're paying for the flexibility of the next three months. You never know what's going to happen with that pick. The player you take is the player. So I think basically here, yeah, you see a lot of these startups where you see some picks, even it happens in dispersal drafts. We talked about it last week. Like you get in a dispersal and it's like, dude, the real, that person just took Leonard Fournette over the two Oh one. You know, that doesn't make any sense. No. And it's the same in a startup. Like there gets to a point where, you can tell the people in the league that they're, they just don't want the picks because they're not sure about them. So they'll just continue to take names of players and it's all over the board. You'll, you'll see Brandon cooks get taken over like the two Oh three. And you're like, are you, are you really even giving yeah. a second for Brandon? You know what I mean? Like you see yeah. those moves. You clearly can tell if you've been in multiple leagues before and you've played throughout seasons, you can clearly tell where it's like, dude, I'll just take the pick. I'll just take the pick. And people, and you got to remember too, like I can't add Brand Brandon Cooks to something and tear up. I can add exactly. two or three. Exactly. It's, it's what? Cooks. Is it fungible? Yeah, is it's it, not is it fungible. It, it's flexible. Exactly. Well, is, yeah. yeah. So if I yeah, had no, Brandon no, Cooks no. to Jerry Judy, that's not moving me up a tier wide receiver. It's just not. You know what I mean? That maybe someone will give me the third rounder and, and, and back with Jerry yeah. Judy, but you know what I mean? Like a third rounder and a player, but it's now like, you add two Oh three to Jerry Judy. You have a chance. Someone goes, okay, I'll give you, you know, a little, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the picks allow you to be, here's the problem. If you don't draft any rookie picks in a startup and we get to summer, we get to may or June, all you have is a roster of players. Hey Shane, you want to trade? You immediately look at my team. No picks. Shane, you don't like some of the guys I drafted in the startup? No, I don't like those guys. Like, no. I can tell you all day that they're good values and that you should trade for them. But if you don't like them, you, I, uh, an option of somebody to trade with is now gone. Because players are very finite. You, someone either likes a player or they don't. So, yeah. I, I could just draft all rookie picks and say I'll just figure it out over the next six months. Yeah, that's when you see people in startups. Instead of taking players, they're just taking every single third rounder. They're like, I might as well just draft a bunch of rerolls instead of mm -hmm. um, instead of pick individual players. Okay, let's go to um, let's go to this one right here. Uh, Shane does have the two of two. I was a little concerned there for a second. Jason Black, thank you very much for the super chat. This is one of two best ball, fourteen team super flex start twelve half PPR, a point five tight end premium, forty man roster. My QBs are the one oh two and Tannehill have the one 102 excuse me have the 101 102 109 111 three seconds and four thirds the second part is plus an extra 24 first my players of any value are project pacheco sutton and hawkinson and five fringe threshold roster clogger wide receivers what are you trading picks for when your team's this bad slash how many picks do you keep uh, I'm trading single picks for multiple picks because um, my team is bad. So I'm not going to consolidate and go get hammers and then sledgehammers and whatnot because, um, well, they're not going to be very fun on a start 12 um, when I can only like reasonably expect like four of those guys to produce. Um, so, yeah, I'm probably going to be splitting those assets. Unfortunately, at the 102, I think, yeah, you are pretty much duty bound to go quarterback there when Tannehill is your only quarterback in a super flex. Um, given the caveat, of course, you've tried to get Kyler, Lamar, everyone that people have bad feelings towards. Yeah, I think this is one of those teams where your best bet is to probably try to tank to the 101, 102 next year. You don't have enough assets. The, the one thing you can probably exploit here is check in to see how the roster uh, or the draft picks are allocated. 
40 man rosters is pretty deep, even in a 14 team start 12. Yeah. So there's not going to be a lot of probably grinding ability in terms of churning and burning roster spots. And I do kind of agree if you can pivot down off of like the 113 and get multiple seconds or, you know, move that for a future first and a third or something like that, like you just do that. But I'd also check into the bylaws. Like it would be a big win from like an ROI perspective if you ended up hitting on like the 101 or 102 next year versus like the 104 or 105. So what are the rules? Like 40 man rosters, if it's like potential points, is there, I mean, I, I hate to say this because mm -hmm. it's kind of going towards like you're strategically tanking, but 40 man rosters, you know, can I pull a Shane in one of the HQ leagues and 40 man rosters, I roster 22 players and my potential points suck. Cause I just, I literally, there's no, I've never seen a league in the bylaws that is, and maybe I just haven't seen enough, but I have never seen a league where they identify their roster floor. I, we've seen like roster limits, right? Yeah. But in potential points leagues, have you guys seen in some potential points leagues where people don't ever maximize their roster spots? And it's like, that's kind of benefiting them. So yeah, yeah. I think you tank that bad boy, sell Tannehill, sell Cortland Sutton. I mean, literally that's a gut job. Yeah. It's, it's a gut job. It's no doubt. It's a gut job. And I, I don't know. I, I would trade back from the one two a little bit and still maybe, maybe snatch up a quarterback. Yeah. Get if a I could, more pieces. Yeah. I, I'd anyway. be fine with trading back to like one Oh five and going, yeah. all right, I got levies or Richardson. Hopefully mm -hmm. one of you dudes hits. If you don't, well, I'll have the one Oh one next year. Well, I'm probably going to have the one Oh one next year anyway. So, so dad's in here, uh, dad 30. Hello. How are you, sir? He hasn't given us the like from Facebook yet. Neither has your uncle Shane text. Your, oh, text your not uncle, make sure he's okay. Oh, he's not, not a fan okay. of the show anymore. Okay. I wonder if that other guy, if we're still his favorite dynasty show, uh, as of now, um, drawing a blank on his name for argument's sake, let's say top three quarterbacks are Mahomes, Allen Burrow. What would you add on top? of a second tier QB like Lawrence Fields to trade for one of the elites, super flex, of course, but then he throws in here or add Hertz top four, just trying to make it simple. Okay. So what are you attacking on top of here? I'll, I'll just, I'll frame it up for you. Would you rather have T law and the one Oh four or Jalen hurts? Jalen hurts. Maybe. Yeah, I, I think. My answer is I don't. I don't. I, I want to. I don't. I, I, I'm. If I have Justin Fields and Trevor now. Lawrence, I'm. I'll add a second to get Josh Allen or Patrick yeah. Mahomes, and that's not going to happen. But if if I have like quarterback five and quarterback eight, why am I using my extra assets to go to quarterback two, quarterback three? It just doesn't. It's not make a sense. priority. Well, yeah. I mean, the quarterback one, two, and three. If we look at the scoring, right? I think it was actually QB one through four was pretty significantly more than say the QB eight last year, but. That one, you don't know that that scoring is going to hold steady because it won't. To one of those lower, like lower QB ones, was Trevor Lawrence, who's a second year guy, who also is getting Calvin Ridley added to the roster next year and probably a wide receiver in the draft. So there's room to expect uh, for his ceiling to grow. And the same, yeah, the same thing with, uh, I guess, Fields, right? Like imagine when that guy starts throwing for more than 200 yards in a game. Like imagine when he does that, like, I don't know, five times in a season as opposed to two, then all of a sudden you're cooking with grease. So yeah, it'd be really hard for me to add a first to that. Now, if I was moving, if someone was going to take a first and T law for Mahomes, All right. I think Mahomes is the one where I'm like, you know what? The thing about Mahomes is he's still maintained to be elite after he's gotten paid, after he's making a super max contract, like he's already still matched everybody else and he's done it almost like in the second generation of his career already yeah. you know so i i can understand going and getting mahomes but i'm also somebody that's like if i already have mahomes in five or six leagues it just doesn't feel like i want to go tack you know two firsts onto my justin fields to get mahomes like that's oh. just not where i'm looking to allocate my resources Good. so it's really hard to answer for that i'd give two firsts for lamar jackson since everyone hates him yeah. Oh, look, I see a Facebook like now. Thanks, uh, Brian. Steve. Brian Severance. Is that him? Uh, Byron? Nope. No, that's not my uncle. I don't know who that gentleman is. Oh, that's okay. dad. His name's up. Oh, yeah, it is. But it's. Yeah. Wait, he's a different last name. name. Brian. Yeah, yeah. This is. He's, he's got a he's got a burner a burner. Uh, oh, okay. Thumbs up. Oh, you know what? He had to set up a burner, so um, if he sent us a super chat, he didn't get in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I see this. Um, 
uh, I see this super chat right here. I'm just going to pull it up, Shane, because maybe have you uh, have you dig here, see if there was a question that came with it from Joseph. Come Sorry, on, Joseph. let's put you to work. I'll give <laughs> I'll give Scott a question here. Um, let's go to this one right here. Is AJ Brown and Saquon too much for the one on one? Other wide receivers are Chase, Waddle, Garrett Wilson. Other running backs are CMC and Mixon. In a start six, maybe not. But yeah, generally, like this is the kind of league where the person at the 101 is going, man, can I get two skill players that are top 15, 20 assets? Like that's the dream trade for the 101. So when if I have the if I get this in my inbox at the 101, that's one of the few deals where I'm like, maybe I don't smash yeah. decline this. So yeah, I think this is too much. And then I could trade Saquon for a 24 first and Ramondre Stevenson. And be like, oh. Well, it sounds like he's giving the two for the one here. That and is in way that too case, much to give. Yeah, you don't I'm not do that. that right you, now. Yeah, that's that's theft theftery. Oh, I found Joseph. Oh, nice. Okay, let me throw up. Uh, all right, that's his. Great. Thank you for the super chat, Joseph. Twelve team super flex start eleven one point seven five tight end premium a point two five point per carry so that's a big bonus uh point two five for every carry from a running back or quarterback six point per pass tds it's start up soon and i have the 103 what kind of offers do i make to 101 102 104 or 105 to acquire their first round pick uh, rewind about 10 minutes and I'm literally spamming that offer to everybody in the top nine picks. Shane, Shane, for some reason, Shane doesn't. Shane likes the 108. Has that you, you said spot? you were going to give your second round, third round, fourth rounds, and then you're going to ask back. Would you say the tenth? No, I'd start. I'd start a little greedy. I'd start for give me. I'll give up my second, my third, and my fourth, and give me back whatever pick that is in the top eight, and I'll ask for a sixth and an eighth back. But I'd yeah. go down to like a ninth, tenth, and eleventh. If that, like, if I can get two picks inside the top eleven or twelve rounds and a start eleven, I'm fine with it. But obviously, I'm going to try to get back, you know, a sixth and a ninth, or a seventh and an eighth, or something like that. Like that's a that's a home run deal. If you get like a one, seven, and an eight for a two, three, and four, you're not even going to really feel the difference between the the seven and the eight and the three and the four. No, Name I only. Mean, if you're rolling out there at 103, and so let's just say you get the 103 in the worst first rounder. I don't know. I'm air quoting that technically. It would be on, on the block at 105. You, you're looking at Jalen Hurts and Joe Hurts Burrow. or Herbert or Burrow. Like, yeah, like that. You've smashed. You've yeah, smashed that, the startup. It, it almost doesn't. You'd have to be really bad at drafting um, to not be able to build a team around that that can compete. Um, I mean, doesn't it feel like if you get those two Shane and you didn't lose any startup picks that you've almost kind of like, you're a top eight team at minimum. You know what I mean? Right off the bat. One trade. You're, you're like almost a, you're a playoff contender overnight. And it's important that we just keep pointing this out. Like the ADP or the, the, the startup picks between like round five and nine, you've got like just about the same rate of hitting. Um, so, and we yeah. don't have a lot of information on those guys. It's a lot of free agents. It's a lot of guys that are going to draft different players at different positions. So, yeah, do it all day. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of a scary thing for people to do. They're like, man, I'm giving up my second, third, and fourth. They see all these massive names. And then they try to trade back up and end up giving up more value. Yeah. Because, you know, because they're like, man, I'm not picking for another four rounds or what have you. Um, this brought up the question though, Scott, you had talked before and Shane, I'm sure you've talked about it too, but about clustering picks. Um, so clustering picks in like the ninth, 10th, 11th round, I'm just making up those numbers, but talk to me about clustering startup picks. Cause I've seen you do that too. Yeah. I mean, if you do the trade we just talked about where let's say you're picking at the one Oh three and you somehow can trade up to the one Oh five. So now I start with the 103 and the 105. I pick two quarterbacks. Easy. I don't have to worry because I don't pick again for three rounds. I'm not interested in trading up to pick. that. You nailed it, Clay. People go, man, I'd love to start my Joe Burrow, Josh Allen team, and I'd love to trade up and get Jonathan Taylor. And then people give up a future first to move up into the third mm-hmm. to take Jonathan Taylor. Now you're really committed, and you now have a very narrow window to where you – Jonathan Taylor better hit because you're not only invested in that trade. You already are invested in the two quarterback build. You have no outs, you know, like you have very little room to wiggle and you have eight months before that team actually takes the field. So my strategy is 
now I'm back. Let's say I don't make any other moves. I still pick in the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth. Let's say I got a ninth and a tenth back in the original trade. Can I trade my fifth for a future first and a ninth? Mm -hmm. Can I trade my sixth for a future first and a tenth? Again, it's going to feel uncomfortable because you're not picking again. That's five rounds. If you get those two deals, you're not picking for five rounds. But then, man, you get to the seventh and you got a seventh and an eighth and you got three ninths, three tenths, two firsts banked in the back for next year. All you got to do is build like a competitive value-based roster in those ranges and feel a little uncomfortable with the names you're getting. You're not getting the sexy names from round four, round five. You're kind of getting the leftover names in round seven, eight, nine, ten. But guess what? You can reboot some of that skill player talent that you might have taken a little bit of a hit on because mm-hmm. you got three firsts in 2024. That's and the big you advantage. have your two elite QBs. And, You've exactly. got that address already. And guess what happens if you hit on a couple of those picks in round seven, eight, nine, and ten? Because it's January and we don't know a lot of stuff, right? Dude, that's how you master the league. Because people go, how the hell did you build this team with some viable skill players, with some decent running backs, and you have three firsts? Like that, that's how you build a monster in a startup. I, I don't know a better way to do it. I don't know if Shane has any other thoughts, but like that's what I would do right now. If I had the time, I'd literally put as much money in as I could, find random leagues and just do this over and over and over and over. And over. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't play in rando leagues just because the the lack of strategy uh it makes my brain melt uh, a lot of times. But no, just just echo on what Scott said and then also just put your phone away. Because you see names and you start chasing names, like you were saying, Clay. You're like, oh yeah, I want to add JT. You just see a name there, like who cares? Don't worry about it. Like, oh, it'd be great to really add T Higgins here. And then, like you said, you're like, oh, but now I don't have a 24 first. Um, you know what? Also, be great. Could I add a Brandon Ayuk? I'll just throw a 25 first at him. Like 25 is not a real year, right? So I'm just gonna throw a 25 <laughs> first when Brandon Ayuk's in the ninth round because I really want to target him. Like you, you do get fixated on names after you get those two monster yeah. quarterbacks. You've pretty much won the draft unless you screw it up. Um, yep. You can only screw it up by like chasing. Okay, good stuff there. Let's um, let's keep on rolling here. I saw Mister Mister Wonderful had one for us. I was actually just watching Shark Tank before we started streaming. I'm so hooked on that show, man. For forever, always and forever. 12 team super flex PPR tight end premium start 10. And thank you, Mister Wonderful. Appreciate it. Get Justin Jefferson, Danny Dimes, give 2023 Lotto first. So it could be the 101, 102, or 103. DK, Tony. Okay, so he's getting Jefferson and Dimes, giving what could be a top three first, DK and Tony. He's got Watson, Herbert, DK, Olave, DJ Moore, London, Tony Pitts, um, that Lotto first. 104, 202, and a few more seconds. Any other recommendations? So, I mean, he could end up with the 101 anyway because he's already got a lot of first um, or, without making the trade, or he could end up with the 103. I'm not doing this. I, if I trade this, if I do this, and it ends up being the 103, um, and I gave up Justin Jefferson. No, he's getting those guys. He's getting, he's Jeff, getting Jefferson. Jefferson and Danny Dimes. But I'm smashing this trade. Up the 101 DK Tony. Oh, yeah, 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 bye. The only way you really, like, take a 50-50 hit on this is if it's the 101. If it's the 102 I mean, or 103, yeah, if you smashed it, I'm doing it. I don't even care if it's the 101. All right, you got Bijan. I got JJ. Exactly. Well, you got, I got DK. All right, well, Dimes is <laughs> DK and I got Danny flexed, Dimes, son. Right, and then you're like, oh, well, I got Tony, and I'll be like, yeah, you got me there. You, you got a freak Darius Tony. You won, bro. Or bro at. And I like the roster construction it creates. Watson, Herbert, Danny Dimes. Like, that's an yeah. awesome quarterback room. You know, and you yeah. got all these extra picks to kind of throw around and build, you know, your skill players out. I love it. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Wonderful. Appreciate it. Let's go to this one. Or it was a couple parter. It's Robert. He's got a he's got a four parter, but he starts off by saying, hey, guys, thank you a ton for the roster review. So Shane and Scott just did a roster review on him. I can't overstate how useful the review was. It was like a 30-minute episode all about my team. Very cool. 
And speaking of roster reviews, we, uh, we've got a ton in the hopper. We've got a, a long list. There's a bunch of emails that have been sent to me that I haven't replied to yet. My apologies. I will be getting to them and I have timestamps on all those emails. So I know, you know, who's first in the queue. So bear with us, uh, bear with me. So let's go to the second part here. 12 team super flex start nine PPR traded Lance and a 24 first for Justin Fields. Have the 2023 101, 108, 109, and multiple firsts and seconds in 24 and 25. QBs now are Watson, Fields, Ritter. Wide receivers are Garrett Wilson, Dotson, and Trash. <laughs> Herbert manager has Alave and likes Watson and Dotson on my side. Would you upgrade to Herbert slash yeah. Alave from Watson, Dotson? Watson Dotson, I like that. Or Stan Pat with Watson Fields at QB. Scott's latest DD pod has me. So to move dots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh man, he's got you. Oh man. Powerful I mean, I, I don't I don't understand why someone would do Alave and Herbert for Watson and Jahan Dotson, but yeah, I mean, if there's even a if even if you have to add like two seconds to that deal or something, I'm smashing that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just to answer his last question, yeah, I mean, I think Dotson is a classic guy. I would reroll, you know, I'd reroll for the wide receiver five in this class and just take my chances that the worst case scenario, I get another Jahan Dotson. Yeah, but I have a twenty percent chance of getting a you know Deontay Johnson or DJ Moore, you know, someone that's probably a little better. Who did I uh, see come to him? Was it Josh Downs? So Josh Downs actually had um, multiple productive seasons in college. And he's younger yeah. and he's, uh, and he's probably yeah. has a chance to have a higher value ceiling. You know, you've yeah. kind of seen what Dotson is. He's people. Is anyone clamoring to go buy Jahan Dotson? No, it doesn't no. feel like Chris, it. Chris Olave is a top 12 dynasty wide receiver right now. Um, next by this time next year, he's probably a top six if he isn't already. Dotson's got the commander's stink on him. And then I don't know if he'll ever be able to wash that off. Just, just saying. I mean, look, I, I love TMC. Even if, you know, look, if, if Dotson went out there and had the season Alave had, I'd be like, no, you don't make this deal. But he didn't because he's not that player. He's not that he just, guy. He just doesn't track as a guy. I mean, he's a 22 year old rookie that had a good season, not a yeah. great season. You know, it's, right. it, we would, if you put George Pickens in that deal, we would be saying the same thing. Yeah. So, the only difference is I think people like Pickens more than Dotson, but the same thing applies. Yep. Okay. Eric, 10 team, super flex, half PPR, start 12. Got Burrow. Um, he's got Burrow. Trade Dak in the 108 for Lamar. Yeah. Yeah, 10 team. I'm okay start with it. 12. Yeah, I'm okay yeah. with it. Yeah, do that. Yeah. What 108 doesn't hurt that bad. What if it were um what if it were 105? And Dak or Lamar. Lamar. I'm I'm on the fringe with that because yeah. I think Dak is one of the the tier breaks at quarterback, but at the same time, I haven't quite accepted that if I have Dak, I'm just clearly adding first to go to the tier above. But you know, in two months I could be like, damn, I wish I got rid of some of my Dak shares. So I get it. Got it. Okay, let's keep on uh keep on keeping on here. We're an hour and three minutes into this sucker. Um, four more minutes. I have not gotten called. Um, I am on call tonight. So if I get called, it's going to be a bummer. I'm going to have to bounce. Shane and Scott will finish it off. Um, okay. Let's go to Robert here. 12 team super flex start eight. Send AJ Brown Waddle ETN for Jefferson and the 104. Could push for 103. Rest is Burrow, Lamar, Chase, Keenan, Gabe, Tony, Najee, uh, Connor, Ingram, Komet. Superflex, 12 teams, start eight. I mean, it really falls off after Burrow, Lamar, and Chase, doesn't it? In a start eight. It really does. No, I'm not trading AJB, uh, AJ Brown, Waddle, and ETM for Jefferson in the 103. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I kind of feel like I would rather sell either Waddle or ETN and try to get a two for one where I'm taking a shot on getting two starters out of that versus give up all three just for Jefferson in the 104. Because most likely in a one QB or even in Superflex, I know it's only a start eight, but I don't know what I'm necessarily getting at that that 104. 
like I guessing it's probably the wide receiver one or wide receiver two or Jameer Gibbs. But yeah, I think uh, if you just said, let's say it's Jameer Gibbs and that's a wash with Travis Etienne. I kind of just gave up two starters for one in a format where I could probably count both of those guys as pretty high end starters. So yeah, I'm with Shane decline this. Decline. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that super chat. And let's, um, let's see here. Let's keep the, the comments going, uh, with startup questions. If, if you have them, that's the theme of the night. We have been bouncing around in terms of settings, this and that. So, um, we will here. continue to bounce around. Go ahead, Shane. Here's a good one. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, hold on. I, I just got to find it now. You think he had one in mind when he said that? No, I definitely. Oh, here's one right here. Yeah. I got uh, I got messaged uh, not to forget it because um, people were distracting me. All right. I can't find it. Okay. <laughs> good talk. Good talk. Um, so... Boy, that was a waste of 30 seconds. <laughs> 12 team super flex PPR 1.0 tight end premium start 12. What's the value of late 23 first round picks in a startup? When would you start looking to pick up like the 109 through 204 or so? Okay, so he's saying if the picks are in the startup, where are you going to be taking like the the 109 to early second? Um, so we kind of talked about this earlier in the dispersal dress, right? Like when Jerry Judy starts going off the board, DJ Moore starts going off the board, Brandon Ayuk starts going off the board. I'm like, yeah, they're wide receiver twos, um, wide receiver threes. Um, they're valuable, but you know, it could be more valuable. The 109, because I can put the 109 with something else and move up, or I can just take like the 109, the 110, the 111, control part of the rookie draft, and someone's going to fiend and overpay. And then I'll end up, they'll trade me DJ Moore for the 111, and I'll get the 111, or I'll get DJ Moore in a second for 111. Um, so that's generally where I start to look. Yeah, just, just trust if you're picking, you know, low end wide receiver twos, wide receiver threes, running back twos non-elite tight ends, quarterback twos. I almost look at picks and go, I can always go and get those types for picks. Yeah. So in January and February, I'd rather have the picks. If you're doing a startup in August and all the picks are already made, I, I can understand where you're like, okay, maybe I'll take the veteran over the rookie. But now it's like, yeah, most often than not, I want to have, and I'm not saying take every pick, but if I'm doing a startup, I want to leave with probably six to eight draft picks at least which means there's going to be some uncomfortable spots where I just have to take a couple of them. And I go, eh, in an existing league, I might not take the 112 over DJ Moore, but in the startup, I'll do it just for the principal. Yeah. I love, and I love house. And there's like, you look up and you're like, why does she even have four picks in a row? He's the 110, the 111, the 112, yeah, the yeah, 201 right. and the 202. I hate <clears throat> this guy. So basically that second rounder is worth a first rounder because I'm the only way you get back into the, the end of the first or the top of the second. Yeah. I like it. Ruben, the $4.49 super chat. Hilarious. <laughs> go Niners, go Bengals. Check out uh check out Ruben's uh podcast, Coast to Coast Dynasty. Yes. Thank you, Ruben. Appreciate Mike. appreciate that. That was part of the the agreement for that super chat was giving a shout out to Coast to Coast Dynasty. Uh, but no, check that out. So let's go to um this was a comment here. 109 is tricky. No more elite QBs left in round one, but also likely no more top 12 QBs by the time 204 comes back around. Suggestions from that spot. Didn't we talk about that earlier? I think we kind it's, of talked about that earlier. It's a QB. Yeah. It's a QB. There's no more elite QBs, bro. It, Mahomes, Allen, Herbert, Hertz, Burrow, Watson, Fields, Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. That's Stop. nine. Okay. Argue, argue with so me. What, one so one hundred nine is not, not tricky, tricky at all. It's actually the <laughs> if you okay with any of the nine, it's the best spot in a third round reversal, right? Yeah. Well, it's a it's a fine spot in a third it's a, round. It's reversal. a good spot. It's a good spot. Yeah. It's a good spot. It's not that one hundred eight, man. That's the that is the spot. Sweet spot. <laughs> that's the sweet spot. Okay, let's uh let's keep going here. Um. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> I know you starred that, Shane. I see what? some, uh, see some great, uh, just some like random ass ones, like funny ones. Okay, here's an inbox trade: 
Bennett Muscle Man trade in his inbox. 10 team super flex tight end premium. Get ETN and Aaron Jones. Give the 106 Jordan Love, 209 David Bell. Have no running backs. I have Burrow, Watson, Higgins, Waddle, Garrett Wilson, London, Burks, Goddard, 423 first and three seconds. I'm okay with it. I'm fine with it because it's, I mean, you don't want to buy running backs right now, but those, that's very cheap, very cheap running backs. And you're clearing up David Bell and Jordan Love off your team. It's a 10 yeah, team or two. So I'm not as yeah. excited to take the quarterback three or four, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm yeah. good with it. that. That is how you buy running backs or that's how right. you trade away a pick. The key here is he got two potential starters instead of one. If you just said yeah. 106 for ETN, I would have been like, okay. But the two for one, and you basically threw away garbage to get the extra running back. So good job. Yeah, I think you'll, you'll survive losing David Bell. Hit accept Bennett Muscle Man. He's got some fancy like pendant there that he's holding in his hand. I don't know what that is, but I need it. Okay, let's go to um, this next one here. Oh, I was at the live. I wasn't even in the start section. I was yeah, in the live. Yeah, good to start, bro. I was I was busting I was busting Shane's balls, but it wasn't even something that he had starred yeah. that he put up. After last week's episode, I traded Chenault plus David Bell in a 24 third for D Hop in a 25 second. Insert waiver wire running back here. Big up to you guys. Yeah, that's great. That's getting rid of just a bunch of absolute rubbish, trash, refuse. Uh <laughs> that's like the garbage disposal, like gunk. You got that off your roster and traded it for a sandwich. The sandwich Eric- might be a little old and crusty and a little crunchy, (laughs) but it's still a good sandwich. He went fishing and came home with a freezer full of meals for the winter. So great job. (laughs) That's so good. I I always have to like take it's 111 in TikTok. Make a note. 111 TikTok. Okay. Hide the current comment. Fantasy King, the 101 for the 102 and 103 in a 1QB. Shane? He could get Jordan Addison and Jackson and, Smith the yeah. Jigba. Oh, I could even go Jameer Gibbs and Jordan Addison. You, the, Jordan the beauty Gibbs, is you Jackson get to pick. The, you get to oh, pick the two, so you don't I, even have to decide. There's now. any combination I can take right there. Yeah, unless it's start eight or nine, uh, I don't have any problem at all taking this deal like immediately. Let me get those picks. Yeah. So in a start eight, you're keeping the one on one. What? Was, was that not English? You can tell his brain just disconnected <laughs> after he answered. I've moved on. I'm sorry. What? In a start so eight, it, would you not do it? Start eight? No. You know what? Because B. John's, what, one eighth of my starting rosters. If we divide that further, he's too forced. That makes him like 50% of my starting lineup. There's no way. I'm not moving him. Okay, this is um, we already put that one up. I'll unstar it. We've got another super chat from Aaron. Thank you very much. I own Lance on a rebuild with a plan to build around him and Watson, but now he feels dead. Have been offered a random 24 first. Do I re roll or target Purdy? And what is his worth? Yeah, I'm the fine. second part. No, I don't yeah, just I go buy Purdy because I have Lance. I'd probably actually want to bet the other way. Like, I'm if I have one or the other, I'm just going to bet on the one that I have. But I'd be fine re-rolling Lance for the first. That's yeah, okay. Give, give me that 24 first ASAP um, and get Lance off my roster. See you, bro. You go. And I don't care about Brock Purdy. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, what's what's Brock Purdy worth, probably. Scott? Are you giving? Are you gonna give me the two o three? I give you Brock Purdy. Purdy. I, I think someone said it earlier. I'm not selling Purdy unless I'm getting a late first, which is pretty much locking me into a like a first round profile. I, I I think he's done enough to say like he's the favorite to be the starter. And worst case scenario, you end up with a backup quarterback in the one offense in the league where you would have to have the backup, right? People were paying seconds for like Gardner Minshew because he was starting for three games, you know? So like when you put it in that scope, if you're, if people are going to be throwing around seconds for like four starts of a decent quarterback, like there's a chance Brock Purdy can get a series of three or four starts 
for the next five years. You know, that's well worth a second, even if it's the 203. So I think you almost have to value him at like a late first, early second. That's the, the price point, I think. Yeah, I can't I can't bring myself to pay that for Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, seventh round draft pick. Every NFL team tra- uh, passed on him 16 times in a seven round draft. So I want no parts of him. I'm not paying a second for him. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Oh, just to real speak to this, if you have Trey Lance, the answer isn't go. Let me protect myself no. with Brock Purdy. That that's the opposite yeah. of what you should be doing. Mm-hmm. It's like you almost, if you have both, you should almost kind of either pick a pick a lane or don't go and just buy the other so you secure the starter because you're just pissing value away there. No. Yep. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, for that super chat, Aaron. Let's put up. Um, let's put up another one here. Firefox, Firefox. Thank you. 101 or the 105 and Brees Hall. It's a 12 team super flex start eight. Shane can take this one. I, I love to hear the math in his head. I mean, Brees Hall, except for the whole tearing up his knee thing, ain't that much that below Bijan. Um, sorry to tell people. Um, Bijan's nice and all, but Brees was super nice. Start eight. Uh, I'll probably hold on to the 101. I, I should take the 105 and Brees, but I can't. If Brees wasn't coming off of an injury, this wouldn't even be a thought. Like, I'd slam except Brees in the 105, but he is, and I'm not going to pass up on Bijan there or the, holding on to the one-on-one. Yeah, I mean, two yeah. minutes ago, yeah. Shane said he'd rather have the one-on-one over the 102 and the 103 in a start eight. So this is basically a even a lesser version of that, I think. So I think you just got to keep the one-on-one. If feels like you could look back and say this was a big win if I would have taken the package, but yeah, I'm good with just keeping the one-on-one. Okay, let's um thank you for that super chat. Let's go to Nicholas's. What's the ideal number of rookie draft picks to draft in the startup? So do you think it should only be first, second, and third rounders? Uh you want fourths and fifths in there? I, you get to a point where I have to pick a single player that's in fourth round range. I would much rather just take draft picks. So yeah. there there becomes a point where I only will take picks. I will take the 412 over like a Jarek McKinnon type, you know? Like and people go, oh, no way. Why would you do that?" It's again, that pick can give me a lot more flexibility to build my roster differently and I don't have to pay for the information right now. Like in and I won't lie. So we just did a startup HQ to Renegades 2 on Sleeper and uh around the th- 25th round or so um we were just drafting guys where the only reason i didn't take draft picks is because i was too lazy um to take a kicker and then yeah, yeah, yeah. what pick it was <laughs> um tell people what pick it was but if that pick had actually been in the draft there's absolutely no way i would have drafted a human being um or if it would have been like on saturdays uh when those picks would have came up so yeah uh me i generally want to try to come out of of a startup if I can, if the rookie picture in it, I, I'd like two firsts um, as, much, as much as I can. I'd like two seconds after that, just an algorithm of third and fourths. <laughs> an algorithm. <laughs> That's the hashtag for this live stream. Yeah. I definitely misread his uh, question too. In my head, I was thinking like, should you have fourth and fifth round picks in your startup? <clears throat> um, maybe. What's the idea number of rookie draft picks? No, no, you misread that. Yeah, I, I misread it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that question. Let's uh, let's move on to this one right here. Kay, thank you for the super chat. Twelve team super flex PPR start nine. Uh, Khalil Herbert, twenty four second, twenty five third. Got Dalvin. Yeah. Okay. Gave Khalil Herbert. Yeah, that's that's fine. Or Scott's like, no, <laughs> no, no. I, 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 yeah, it's fine. I don't understand what the person trading Dalvin Cook away is looking at here. So yeah, I mean, this is just one of those deals where you're like, what? Yeah. Look, Dalvin Cook is one of my elderly uh, people that I want to collect this year. Um, I've talked about this before. If I can do it for uh, Khalil Herbert, whatever, a second and. Uh, a pick in 2025 that isn't even in the first two rounds. I'd slam accept that. So the the second part of this is is right up Shane's alley too, because like he said, he's going to be collecting 
old running backs this uh, this upcoming season. So Shane, rank your favorite vet RBs you're looking to buy this off season for a one to three year contending window. Henry is my absolute favorite because um, he is going to be what thirty years old. Um, the narrative is going to start again at some point, and I'll be I was part of it for the last four years um, of how you can't trust him because he's an old running back, <laughs> but. Uh, doesn't matter. Does it doesn't apply to him? Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, they're in that range. Alvin Kamara, because I can get him cheaper because I expect him to be suspended for multiple games next year. Uh Kareem Hunt. Uh I still like Leonard Fournette. And when we go really, really low, uh, I, I'm hoarding all the Latin Mary and Dante Deontay Foremans I can hold on to too. Yeah, the only one that comes to mind to me that I just wrote about on my last DLF article was James Connor as a good buy. Just because I think people see him as a tier below all those guys that Shane mentioned, and he's essentially the same type of bet as those guys, but probably around cheaper. Honestly, this is going to be a real fun offseason because I think we're going to see the running back landscape be reset. You're going to see some guys that get signed and you go, wow, that team actually re-signed that guy over this guy. You know, like how did Jamal Williams or Samaj P. Ryan get signed by their teams over guys we thought were better, you know? And then you're going to see guys that, that sit out there don't even get sniffs, you know, like you could see like a Damian Harris or Devin Singletary, like they don't even get a contract offer till June. You know, you're going, I thought this guy was good. Like he had a chance to go somewhere and start and really the NFL values him as a body. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, if you're right, if you're willing to be convicted on your buys at running back, I think you, you can make a lot of profit this off season. Okay, so here's one from graphic 13, 12 team super flex start 11 PPR. Give the 104, 107, 108, the 24 second. Get Amon Ra, St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, and Chris Olave. Great show. I'm thinking go with the known commodities. Yes, go with the known commodities that you're getting very cheap. Two, four, six. That's six firsts. Even if you want to be conservative, that's four and a half firsts for Garrett Wilson, Chris Alave, and ARS. But yes, yeah, slam that. Just absolutely smack. Start 11, you just picked up the AB. Like, generally, I'd be like, oh, I'd only give up all those picks in a start 11. Bro, you just got the three top 12 wide receivers. Yeah. yeah. All for under the age first. of uh, 16. Yeah. Yeah. Slam that. Yeah, I think if one of those picks was a little higher and it was a 24 first, I could see the logic of the other team doing yeah. it. This is not how I'd want to go about. He's probably trying to fix either a quarterback room or a running back room by making a deal like this. But this is how not how I'd want to do it. I I mean, I would never sell these three receivers in the same trade. That's insane. Dude, like, yeah, I, I'm every, every league that I'm in that I already don't own Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave or both, I'm trying to trade for those two. Um, Amal Ross St. Brown, less so. Um but not because I, I, you know, I think he's a little below them tier wise. But anyway, either any way you look at it, just adding those three receivers to your room, just you don't have to worry about receivers for the next six years. Well, the problem is a couple of the picks he's going to get are probably receiver picks. Like he's already looking at receivers with those picks. Mm -hmm. So he's, I mean, the motivation he's probably he's trying to fix quarterbacks. I'm guessing is the reason you'd probably make a deal like this. But can you just fix it by trading one of those guys? You know, it just doesn't feel like you'd ever trade all three in a deal. So yeah, take it. Well, he's trying to fix quarterback, but those picks aren't good to get quarterbacks unless you want to get well, 104 Levies and, and Richardson. I, I mean, you can buy a vet for it, but you could be getting the. I mean, he may QB get the QB two. He may get the QB two at 104, but then yeah. at 10, 107 and 108, he's going to go, oh, Quentin Johnson and Jordan Addison. Great. I traded Chris Olave yeah. and Garrett Wilson for that, you know? Yeah. So you're not getting a lot of value there. So, yeah. Okay. Let's go to, um, let's go to this one. Uh, we have a super chat. Shane, when you tally up the super chats, are you taking into account what, what is the currency here? Is this uh, a euro? Um, yeah, no, that's a pound. That's a pound. <laughs> I'm just trusting you. You held a pretty decent straight face there. I, or, or it's gold. I don't know. I don't really know how that works. Yeah. Ether. Gold coin, Thank I you for it. It's a Bitcoin. Thank you for the uh, super chat either way, Casper. Hey, y'all. Love the show. Just traded for Bijan. Congratulations. That's part one. Part two, was I mental or was this okay? 103, 106, 24 first and 25 first for Bijan. 
Jamison Williams, Mechie, Kyron Williams, and Deion Jackson. Okay, so we don't have the uh, we don't have the format here. Uh, oh, here it is, part three. Look at that. Superflex start eleven half point tight end premium team is Herbert Watson Love no running backs of note AJ Brown Higgins Ridley um, Boyd's got Pitts and Joku at tight end still have six one six seconds and it's Empire so need to win three and four years for the Megapot this is year two. I don't, I don't, I, that was a lot to give up. I, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm paying that much for B, for Bijan because I think, especially in an start empire 11, empire start 11. Well, what could I have traded that 106? I mean, think about the guy that got 106 and he got Aaron Jones and Travis Etienne. Yeah. Imagine what else you could do if you added that deal into this league, you know? I don't I think I give this up. I go by JT at a discount, you know? Um, I go buy Brees Hall cheaper than this is what I'm thinking. Like just looking just off top of my head, I throw, if you wanted to trade all these picks, just using trades, using these picks, 106 and a 24 first, you want to offer that for JT? Cool. You want to offer the 103 and the 25 first? We don't need to. You want to offer the 25 first uh, and something else for Derrick Henry? And then I've just got two running backs there and I still have the one or three. So I, yeah, it's a lot to give up four first and two of them being fairly early. And I got the feeling not to be mean that the, your quarterbacks are set, but I, I don't like it. Yeah. So, so let's just, this isn't a roster review, but let's take a quick peek here and, and let's find out a way to fix it or at least a, a small little win. So Herbert Watson, like you said, that's in good shape. Okay. Six seconds. What moves you got running through your head to? Uh, well, to did he already make thing. this trade? I assume. Was I mental or was this okay? So was yes. So so here's the problem. You have six seconds. Guess what that could have been? Six dart running backs. You know. So I mean, I guess you can still do that strategy, but it, it kind of feels like. I mean, we've seen other deals in this chat tonight. One hundred six for Aaron Jones and Travis Etienne. You know. 25 first for Derrick Henry. Like Shane said, you'd still have that 103, right? You still have the 103 to play with. And you have your 24 first. And you have six seconds. Like, I'm not criticizing him. He mentioned that this was a big move for him, you know, whatever. But you don't need to have a stacked running back room. Look at the running backs that are continually winning at the end of the season. Not who's winning in October. Not who's winning in week one. I mean, I don't know how many roster spots he has, but like in a start 11, let's say it's 30 roster spots. You know how many dart throw running backs he can take with those six seconds and move around with those extra firsts. I mean, you know, look at assets as running backs. You'd have to do some work to get them. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, I can't even really think how I would fix it at this point. I'd probably need a couple of days to digest that I now have a lot of work in front of me. Look, anything yeah, it's, it's all right. You'll, you'll pull it off. Yeah, you'll pull it off. Just uh, just smash value on your on your next trade. It'll be fine. It's dynasty. Keep trading. Happy trading. Okay, Justin Adams. Thank you for the super chat. It's a twelve team, one QB start ten. Would you trade the one hundred three for Kyle Pitts? I have the one hundred one, one hundred two, and one hundred five. Also, if he declines, what's the most you'd add? Current tight ends are McBride and Jelani Woods. Yeah, I give up the one hundred three for pets. Yeah, yeah I think that. Flex. Yeah. Do you do you think the difference here, Shane, is that he has the one hundred one and one hundred two, so he kind of controls what that one hundred two is going to be? It's non super flex, so it, the difference between the I mean, one hundred three and the one hundred five could be a little a little bigger here, you know? Yeah, and, I, and I'm already thinking that the. Yeah, what you just said, but yeah. Well, gonna, put it this way: if he picks, let's say he needs running back, and he picks Jameer Gibbs at one hundred two. He's also now locked in one of the top three receivers at his own 105. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm okay doing this. Yeah, I do this. If he declines, what's the most you'd add? Uh, would you do the 102? Do? Yeah, you know what? Yes. Yes, I would. I'll take, okay. I still take pits over any of these rookie wide receivers, and I take pits over any running back that's not, uh, name doesn't sound like a mustard. If he doesn't do the 102, then what more can he offer? Well, that's then, like as good of an <laughs> offer as you can make, you know? Then we got to move on. Sometimes you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them, you know? Yep. Kenny Parker said that, or uh, Kenny uh, Pickett. No, Kenny uh, Rogers. That's it. 
Ooh, I think I'm about to make a trade in the uh, in the Dynasty Trades in Five Listener League right now. Yeah, but he won't make the trade that I sent him. Okay, cool. Yeah, let me uh, let me see here. Let me just double check. Sorry, this can be bad podcasting for 30 seconds here. Shane, right, so while you're doing that, I'm just going to pick one of these questions that we starred because we. Uh, How about the one I just put up on the screen that you oh, took down? I was actually looking for that one. That's the one I was going to grab. Is Watson and CMC too much to trade for Mahomes? Um. I'm okay doing this deal. If you can get Mahomes, this is one of those where I'm okay doing it. Very few circumstances, though. I'm okay with it. Like, it wouldn't be like, oh, my God, what did you do? I'd rather not do it. Excuse me. Um, it's a little much, but no, I, I could live with myself if I did that. All right, your turn while Clay is distracted. Oh, Harry, actually, this was a good one. This was a good one. Here, I'll do this one. How do <laughs> This I do is a, a cluster when we're running it. When you do a roster for you, email dynasty trades in five at gmail.com. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hop roster. in there. Yeah, email dynasty trades in five at gmail.com, and then we'll respond back with uh, with details, the process. Um, essentially, we will send you a form that you fill out so we can get details around your league uh, to help us tailor the review, send screenshots of your roster, and then your roster on the roster review videos ends up going on top i'm trying to find it the banners here's what it um here's what it looks like gosh i'm scrolling all over the damn place right here so i disappear your roster comes in between and like that super chat from robert said earlier it's like it's a 30 minute review on your uh private video on your own team not always 30 but maybe his was Anyway, that's uh that's the process there. God, I'm still thinking about this offer. I'm just gonna okay. I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, real quick. Okay. So I'd be giving up the 104 mm -hmm. and a 14 team 14 team super flex mm -hmm. um, tight end premium. I get Kyle Pitts and two late thirds. Yes. Super. Flex. Yeah, I'm good with it. 14 teams. Oh wait, it's 1.75 sign end premium. I'm getting Pitts. Yeah, no, I'm saying it's and it's a 1.75 tight end premium. Yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, we're we're on a live stream where we just said to trade yeah. the 103 in a non premium for. Kyle I, Pitts, I, I know, so. I know, I know. But you know this dumpster fire of it. The trade has been completed. You know this dumpster fire of a team that I'm holding on to that, but I still have the 101, 102, and five. Yeah, okay, you're fine. You're fine. Alrighty, good trade there, Jared. Appreciate you uh, making this entertaining uh, content here. Okay. Now that the season is over, what's the appropriate price to pay for Trevor Lawrence and a super flex? So we're giving the one one for Trevor Lawrence, right? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you going to give the 103 and a 24 first? Yes. I gave up yes. the 102 and a 24 first for Trevor Lawrence. Yes. I mean, it's a first round startup pick. You, you yep. almost do what you can to do it or you do what you can to get them. That's why we talk so much startup because it's so hard to get these guys in trades. And a lot of times in the trades, if you want to go trade for Trevor Lawrence in an existing league, what's the, what's it look like? Three pieces, right? You got and it. You're, you're giving up a three or four for one. That's why it's so much better to do it in a startup. If you can do it, do it. Okay. We already talked about this one. And it was still starred. Let's go to this one right here. 12 team, one QB PPR, 1.5 tight end premium to start eight, two flexes. I want to win in 2023. Running backs are J.K. Dobbins, Rashad White. I have the 101, 102, 105, 106, 109, and 113 set at wide receiver. Am I crazy for still wanting to take JSN at two overall? Crazy? No. Crazy. I think if you, that's how you value him, then you're not crazy because I think a lot of people will value him in the top three or four of every every format. It's a start eight, though. It's one QB. You could probably argue you just take the two running backs and you worry about the fact you're going to be able to find receivers even if they're not rookie receivers. I think if you take running back, running back, and a start eight, you still have five, six, and nine you're probably getting one of the top three receivers at five. And then the trade floodgates could open for you at the six and the nine spot. That's probably how I'd play it. 
Uh, but I don't think he's crazy of going JSN at two. No, and especially because by the time we get to 105, he could be, be completely shut out of Jordan Addison, JSN, and um, I don't know, Zay Flowers, whoever gets picked in the Quentin top. Quentin Johnson. We're fine with it. He's going to get the top. highest draft capital, fine. Shane. Okay, well, then we're happy, and maybe then uh, at 105, uh, Jordan Addison fell to us. But no, I don't think you're, you're – I'm always going to lean wide receiver over running back unless I know I can win this year. And, you know, in that case, yeah, maybe I might take Gibbs. I'm wondering when you're going to switch uh, to liking Quentin Johnson because he is your type. He is, is this my like type. A new, is I'm, this a New I'm, Year's resolution? You're going to, like, switch it. what your I type is? fighting it. I am fighting with every fiber <laughs> of my being. I love big, fast men. And <laughs> he is a big, fast man who's also not very – um. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, coordinated. Um, he looks a mess. It's overrated. Routes. Coordination's yeah. overrated. He, he is exactly my type. Like if uh, my therapist <laughs> and me talk this week, it, it'd definitely be like, oh, I got to stay away from Quentin Johnston because he's the type that always does me bad. When you and your therapist talk this week. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a recurring calendar reminder. <laughs> I'm right there with you, buddy. Um, okay. Do we have this? Have we done this one? here someone wants to trade herbert yes right this was very yep. early on we did bennies okay just yep. making sure because the team looked a little bit different here's uh here's dr daniel forsha he says thank you very much or love this content nobody better for high level dynasty fantasy football strategy thank you dr dan is what we call him thanks and uh, i try to throw in dude. some low level um analysis is too if I shane can. will throw in some low level you know just diversify our yeah. uh our, 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, well the doctor made this comment so we got to sound smart on our on our reply here right i remember when he reached out on twitter i called him dan and then i quickly said Ex excuse me dr forsha you, you put in a lot of work you put in a lot yes. of work to get that that doctor title he's like i'm, I'm dan on twitter <laughs> it's like okay sounds good okay so uh let's put up this one here uh, thank you for the super chat. Yo, guys, great content. Superflex, Lamar and Stafford, Javante, J.K. Dobbins, Pierce, Pitts, wide receiver room is non-existent with only DJ Moore. I have plenty of draft capital. The 103, 105, comma, dot, dot, dot. Shane's looking. 911. All right, I'll go back. <laughs> League settings on that super chat was 12 teams, start 10, half PPR, no tight end premium. So I got most of his comment, right? We may still be missing the part There's two. There's a strong, a strong chunk <laughs> in the middle of like, <laughs> the important part of it. But right, okay. No, 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 no. J Lo. Okay. Go, no, go, go, go on with my. Oh, 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 yes. You guys, great show. Okay. Nice. Okay, so I will read the um, the part through here. Uh, wide receiver room is non-existent with only DJ Moore. I have plenty of draft capital. The 103, 105. Put it up, Shane. Uh, 108, 110, 112, 210, um, and some seconds. Rebuild. Rebuild or... Push through yeah. the address. What a clusterfuck. <laughs> First year <laughs> league where players are way overvalued in terms of giving picks for players. Thoughts? So let's just go look at his roster again, right? We've got Lamar, Stafford. Um, that's for Stafford, not Lamar, of course. I love Lamar. Uh, Javante, Pierce, um, Pitts, wide receiver room is non existent. Only have DJ Moore. He's got a bunch of draft capital. Uh, I, I'd be looking to upgrade my quarterback position and then make as many of these picks as I can, actually. Um, well, maybe not the 24s and 25s because I don't know anything about that century. But the, if I can get use some of this these first-round picks in 23 to get me a real quarterback, not Stafford, I would do that. If I could trade Javante for another first in 24, I would. If I could trade Pierce for a 24 first, uh, I would. Um, and then, yeah, rebuild. I mean, he's already got four 24 firsts. I don't so, care. Give me more. I, I mean, I get it. I get it. He's got the 110 and the 112, which you could easily flip for a 24 first if you can get it. You got Javante. You got Dobbins. You know, you you got options to where you can dominate next year's class. But I think he probably just kind of wants to know. He's got enough assets, right? Got mm -hmm. a lot of assets. Yeah, They're just not allocated assets. in the right spot. So we would always say if this was a roster view, we'd go, how do we get a quarterback? 
and we could stomach pain the price now, especially with all the future picks, because I have flexibility where I'm going to be able to retain some value no matter what happens with some of my players. Then you kind of just play the value game once you get your quarterbacks in place. If you can spend value for another year, keep gaining it with the picks that you have, trade back, trade down for leverage deals, you'll be fine. But, yeah, you got to fix the quarterback room first. I think we redeemed ourselves on that. That will be fun to go back and listen to that (laughs) cluster of trying to find all those comments. Thank you for digging them up, Shane. Um, Okay, we are are almost done tonight. We'll just uh, knock out – a couple more. I just want to pop through what I had in the in the hopper, see if there was a couple of. Um, let's do this one real quick. What's your buy, sell, low price, or startup draft round on each of the QBs from the 21 class that have underperformed? Wilson, Lance, and Jones. Okay. I'm not buying Wilson, but I'll give up a third. I'm not buying Lance. I'd give up a 25 first. Um, Mac Jones, I will give up the one sixteen. Where, where is Scott? Where will you take Trey Lance? If, if you take him, where would you take him in a startup? I mean, Lance is interesting because I, I think we're going to get to a point soon where we've overcorrected on his value because, like, honestly, you put him up next to Anthony Richardson or Will Levis, and you're like, all right, if you threw him in this draft class. Not that he would take him over those guys because there's some warts on him that doesn't exist with those two. But it's not like you would say, oh, yeah, I wouldn't take him in the top 15 picks, right? So I think if he gets to this point where you can move a 112, 201, 202 for him, I'm okay doing that. So that's kind of where my buy range would be. I might let that kind of level off a little bit. You know, Brock Purdy wins a Super Bowl. At that point, he's going to be buried. You know, there is a shot that Trey Lance just goes somewhere else and starts, but we'll see. Um, so I'm actually interested in buying Lance maybe in another couple of weeks while this continues to just the, the spiral downhill for him. Uh, Mac Jones, I'll always be fine buying Mac Jones. I think Mac Jones is good, but he is what he is. I mean, I, I kind of agree with Shane that like QB 15 is probably like where he's going to level off. So do I, am I in a rush to buy that? No, but I think Mac Jones is probably better than his value. And then, I don't know, Zach Wilson. I sold Brock Purdy for a 201 and Zach Wilson the other day. So, like, I got Zach Wilson back as basically, like, the, the I don't want him throw in. Does he ever even get a chance to start again where I can sell him for a second? He probably starts again, but can I sell him for a second? But It's, it's like, going to happen. There's going to be a, a resurgence. Well, but that's where his value is, right? 17 like, years down the he's line. He's a throw no, in is. at this point. So, yep. Uh, yep. yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's do this one. Um, Last one here for me, at least in the hopper. I'm curious to what you all think of Ayuk, Debo, and Kittle moving forward, especially in terms of their value. So there was a bunch of thumbs up uh, put next to this comment in the uh, in the community post. What do you think of their value? Um, well, I'll just say this. Ayuk is very good. I got crushed for saying this in the Destination Devi Discord, but he really is probably just as good as... T. Higgins, Jalen no. Waddle, Devontae Smith. No. If you look at his peripheral numbers from this year, his usage was as good as all of those guys. He just is in a situation that doesn't allow him to score as many fantasy points. So I acknowledge I would rather be in their situations than his. But if you're just talking about buying players, I mean, how often do we talk about buying good players in bad situations that we've seen are good players over and over and over? This is the third straight year we've seen IU be good. Last year, he obviously had the bad start, but even the second half of last year, like he tracks as a wide receiver too. But he's stuck in a situation where he's probably a wide receiver three because he literally has arguably three better pass catchers relative to his skill on his roster. I mean, nothing he can do about that, but that hasn't stopped us from buying other good players in those types of situations. So I think he's, he fits in the DJ Moore, Marquise Brown range where it's like bad situation, better player than what his situation warrants. The other two, I'm not really interested in buying because I, I think they're, they are what they are and you're not getting a discount on either of those two, maybe Kittle because of the positional advantage, but that'd be it. I mean, I th- now I like Debo. Because he was the like wide receiver twenty four, so everyone thinks he's bad at football now. Um, after he was the wide receiver, or whatever he was last year, and everyone thought he was just just great. Um, Kittle, I mean, I'm falling for it again. Um, 
I hate doing this. I'm like, oh, Kittle's great. Let's right. see him catch it off his face mask. Oh, Kittle, he's so much fun. And then he's going to do the same thing to me next year. So, but I think he's cheaper now. So I'm, I'm actually willing to buy Kittle in leagues. I think people have moved off of him. Definitely have moved off of him in terms of uh, the fact that he's no longer even thought of in the Kelsey tier like he was. I don't think he's thought of in the the Andrews tier. And there's some folks that'll tell you that uh it's like it? Hawkinson now Hawkinson over, over him. Over him. Yeah. yeah. So now he's become a buy for me. So is Debo. I like Ayuk. You know, his situation isn't going to change for a little bit, but you know, you you should buy good players as opposed to buying good situations. Yep. Okay. Let's um let's I guess put a close to this thing. One an hour and forty five minutes. Uh, here's a comment here. I got to get in one of these listener leagues, live trades on the stream. Let's go. Yeah, we, we will do another listener league or, or two. We will see, um, we'll have some kind of milestone that, that we'll hit. Uh, we just crossed 6,000 subscribers, which is awesome. We love all you guys. We have 375 eyeballs still on here. So cool, man. That's always a rock solid Tuesday group. We really appreciate you. Um, if you didn't hit the like yet, please look down and, and do so. Would appreciate that. Scott, Shane, want to say anything, boys? No, another Tuesday live stream in the books. Uh, I like having the theme of, you know, startup trades, roster construction, because yeah. I think it, we get so many, I mean, we get so many good questions that honestly, I mean, there's been times where all three of us are in this queue, you know, putting questions in, taking questions out. I mean, we literally could go for 24 hours and have good questions. So it sucks. Like we can't get to everybody's trades. And um, I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but the DMs are picking up, you know, it's five to 10 a day, at least of, you know, Hey, follow up to the live stream or follow up to the roster review, which is fine. Uh, but you know, we're only three individuals, you know what I mean? So I wish we could get to everybody's, but uh, yeah, these Tuesday nights in the off season are just, I, I, I truly do look forward to Tuesday nights. You know, it's like talking about the one thing that I love most and uh, boom, every Tuesday night, it's really reliable. So thank you everyone. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate everyone showing up. I mean, we could still do this if there was three people watching, I don't know if it'd be as much fun. Um, it's gratifying that our, our <laughs> uh, the numbers hit what they hit. Although I'm a little, uh, what's weird is I'm a little jealous that our Bijan episode outperformed our streaming uh, show last week, even like they're not our, my, both our shows, but, I don't know, weird thing, but I, no, I appreciate how everyone turns out for this and the great questions. And yeah, uh, and, and be on the, the um, <clears throat> yeah, be on the lookout for a uh, for a one hundred two show uh, coming probably on Friday is my guess. Out of town this week, a little busy on the uh, on the editing, um, but yeah, Friday. And then I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Roster reviews. I will get back to you on your emails if you've already sent them to me, and if you're waiting for your roster review to be finished. We will get those turned around as quickly as possible. All right. There is one thing. What's up? We have the potential of a Eagles Bengals Super Bowl. Yes. Ooh. Which could be make we could make the next two weeks fun if that ends up happening. Or so, end the show. <laughs> let's just say the roster reviews may be a little spicy during that period. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. Shane and I are on talking terms. <laughs> there might be there might be just single single segments like here's Shane. And then they bring you, they'll bring Scott, Clay will bring Scott on later because we won't be, yeah, we won't be. Or we just record separately, but he puts both of our faces there. But you can probably tell that we're actually not talking to each other. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's fun to think about, though, because it's, I mean, it's really, really hard to, you know, if that were to happen, that'd be fun. And I'll just say I'd have fun with it. Yeah, man, for sure. All right, everyone, we will see you. Bye, ladies and gents.